can't read Master's paper or his letters either when he leaves them lying about. Still, I best my case to learn. I was an archer. There's that odious young man staring up at my window again. <laughs> Begging your pardon. Oh, Josephine, what are you doing there? Reading some cheap penny dreadful, I suppose. <laughs> no, ma'am, I can't. Read that is. What can the school board have been about? <laughs> when I entered the school board, there was no. There was no school board, ma'am, when I entered the service. Would you mind hearing me, ma'am? <clears throat> I was an art student. Hey, Josephine, has your master come in yet? Not yet, ma'am. It's only half past three. Oh. B was a that'll do. Uh, go to the study and put everything in order. Study? Oh, what it may not accomplish. Excuse me, ma'am, but what's the matter with master? I believe Mr. Libby to be in good health. Did he not make a good breakfast this morning? <laughs> yes, ma'am, there's an awful hole in the am. Well, Josephine, what then? Well, ma'am, how is he? He don't speak to you. Josephine, I'm surprised at you. Oh, it's not right, ma'am, it's not right at all. I'm only a poor servant, but I have my feelings. You mean well, but you are ignorant and inexperienced. Control yourself. I can't, I can't. When I see him sitting there for all the world like a stuffed image, when I see you looking so serious. Mr. Liverby's health, Josephine, is not always good. You must be very careful not to annoy him. It's not his health, Mum. It's his temper. That nasty, sulky disposition of his. He has got what we call the up. I cannot <laughs> listen to such language. Leave the room immediately. Yes, Mum. Sometimes he won't speak to me for days, and for some ridiculous reason, too insignificant for a moment's reflection. It was only yesterday at dinner I was unfortunate enough to mention one of his young nephews with whom he had quarrelled. A poor boy who I never saw in my life, but who he turned out of his office for some trifling fault. Naturally, I undertook the unfortunate youth's defence. At last, my amiable husband ordered me to be silent. And I obeyed him, but afterwards I called him a grizzly bear. <laughs> Since then, he hasn't spoken to me one single word. In short, he's in the sulks. <laughs> Still sulky? Did you take out an umbrella, dear? Why, the weather was beautiful. I was saying, just before you came in, if James comes home early tonight, we'll go for a walk before dinner. Don't sit in a drop, dear. You know how easily you catch cold. Now kiss me and be good. <laughs> oh, don't look so cross. Come on, one little smile. One little smile for your little wifey. For a little Georgie Gorgie, come.
ask for it. Are you looking for anything, dear? He'd rather go without the evening news than open his lips. I cannot put up with this any longer. I shall find a way to make you speak. I'm going out, dear. It's four o'clock and I shan't be home till six. If I want back to dinner, don't wait. You want to know where I'm going? Well, I'm going to call on an old school fellow. She has a brother who's in the tenth of SARS, and she's promised to introduce us to each other. It'll be such fun. Goodbye, dear, goodbye. The tenth of SARS, mind. Goodbye. <coughs> Oh, no, 
think she'll be taken off. <laughs> you were carrying on an amateurly correspondence, and you permitted gentlemen to write to you in such terms? Has he been imprudent enough to write? Imprudent, you call it? So we shall find. I'll break every bone in his body. Oh, James, come if you like, but you shall not touch him. Rise, wretched woman. <laughs> This old schoolfellow, this officer in the tent for SARS, your mother shall know all. I'll write to her at once. No, you shall not write to her. There goes your pen, there goes your paper. Mrs. Deliver me, are you insane? I knew I should make you speak. What do you mean? Don't you see? I wrote this letter myself. I was determined to make you speak to me, even if I had to make you jealous. Josephine gave it to the commissioner who brought it here. Ah, so that young scullion was in the plot. my idle young nephew, whom I dismissed from the office. Oh, bother your nephew. I wish he'd never been invented. But you won't do it again. Not if you don't like it. Very well. In return, I promise never to sulk again as long as I live. <laughs> you say that now, but I would wager that before this evening's out, you'll be as bad as ever. Oh, what will you bet? Come now. Ah, that bracelet you wanted me to buy you last week. And you said you couldn't afford, I remember. Well, I promise to get it for you the very next time I'm in the socks. <laughs> very well. Get your money ready. All right. My money's safe enough. So this officer of the Tenth of Sars was a myth? Could you imagine otherwise for a moment? <laughs> Same way twice. 
I'm quite calm and collected. I'm not selfish. Not in the least, my dear, not in the least. But, but James, oh, oh, my honour, this is a serious matter. Not another word. Now, it's no use your trying. You won't get your bracelet, so it's all no good. But I don't mind you standing over dinner anywhere you like, and we'll go to the theatre afterwards. There, now, go and get ready. No, but James, I must explain to you. Not another word. It's all of no use. I tell you, I'm not to be had. Indeed. <laughs> well, Josephine, what is it? Just a little thing, sir. Only as I was coming in just now, a young man who was standing in the portico, well, he offered me five shoes if I would get him to see Mrs. when you was at, sir. This is another attempt. It won't do, Mrs. Liverby. It won't do. Really, and what is he like, this young man? Thin, small, pale. Much uglier than you, sir. But there ain't no account for women's fancies. Uh, just show me those five shillings. Oh, I wouldn't take them, sir. I said to him, what sort of girl do you take me for? And I come and told you at once, sir. You don't mean to make me lose my bet, eh? Your bet, sir? I didn't know as you had a bet. Now, Josephine, you may thank your stars I'm in good humour. But just remember for the future, I don't like practical jokes to be played upon me. Now, it's no use you trying to deny it, for I've heard about the whole affair from beginning to end. Let me hear no more about it. Very well, sir, just as you like. What am I to tell the young man, sir? Oh, take his five shillings and show him up. What, sir? Show him up? Yes, but say that I'm out. All right, sir, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Already, and she told the story very badly. What story? Oh, about the young man who gave her five shillings to get him to see you while I was out of the way. Oh, is it the same man as this morning? Am I to be punished for a silly little lie? What, what did you say to him? Oh, I told her to show the young man up. What? Oh, oh, you shouldn't have done that. The young man is waiting in the next room, sir. Very good. I'll see you at once. Oh, he'll be thrashed to a jelly.
that I let go at the office. That's what he said. He says, I want you to see Mrs. Liverby to ask her to intercede with my uncle. Not I. I knew what all his interceding men. <laughs> so that was what he was following you about for. Well, I suppose I'll forgive the young rascal. Persistence deserves its reward. That was all he wanted of me. Yes, Mum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> The truth is, I wasn't as good out that morning. In short, in the sauce. But you'll never be so anymore? Never. <laughs> <laughs>